walked off by itself. Now, could it? Where is it? Man's got to be kind of dumb to lose something as big as a saddle. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the joke's gone on long enough. I got some work to do. Now, where is it? You good? You ready to ride? Now I'm having a little trouble finding my saddle. All right. Where's the saddle? Well, that's very funny, Smokey. That's hilarious. I'm going to need some straight boards about this long, clean rags, and plenty of hot water. Get the water. Okay. All right, now to set that arm. Yeah, I'll hold it. Oh, that won't be necessary. You won't feel a thing. As bad as I've seen in quite a while. Should be as good as new in a few weeks. Here are some uh, laudanum pills in case the pain gets to be too much for him or in case he has trouble sleeping. And uh, if the pain gets very severe, I can come out and give him another shot. Doctor, that was a very, very good job. Thank you. Uh, I must say, I've had a great deal of experience with this sort of injury. I was a surgeon in an army hospital during the war. Oh, before you go, would you, would you like a drink? No, thank you. I don't drink. But I'll tell you, I would love a cup of coffee if you have one. All right, we'll see what we can do about it. See, Candy's falling asleep. <laughs> would you like some coffee? Uh, no, no. no thanks. Where's Joe? Oh, I guess he went to bed about midnight. Yeah, you should have done the same. <laughs> How is Griff? Oh, he'll be all right. Doctor did a real good job, huh? Oh, I, uh, I wanted to ask you what you want me to do about Bates and Smokey. They, uh, they're the ones that hung that uh, saddle up there in the first place. Mm -hmm. They're feeling pretty bad about it. They've been waiting out there on the porch ever since the doc got here. Well, they should feel badly. It'll teach you something about practical joking. Oh, time to go to bed. Thanks. Sure. 
Doctor, let's see what Hop Singh left in the coffee pot. Yeah, I, I do. you gotta come quick. My brother's been hurt. Pa's taking him to town in a wagon. What's the matter with it? Well, there's a stampede and he was trampled. Would you hurry? I'll go tell Pa you're coming. Doctor, you all right? Mm. Still dizzy. Do like, you think you can make that ride on? Yes, yes, I'll be fine. Thank you. Uh, wait. Look, I'll hitch up the buggy and I'll, I'll drive No, you. no, stay please. right here. I'll get my coat. Doc Martin was here, Ben. Take my word for it, Miles. Dr. Wills knows what he's doing. south. You know, Dave was riding herd when the lightning struck that big fir tree down by the creek. Then there was this clap of thunder, strong enough to knock you right out of the saddle. He's dead. I'm sorry, Mr. Johnson. What do you mean, dead? He can't be dead! Miles? I know he's broken up and bleeding something, but he wouldn't hurt bad enough to die. You're not a doctor, Henry. Well, I've seen men hurt, and so have you. You know when a man's hurt bad enough to die. What did you do to him? An artery was severed. The boy lost too much blood before I was able to get to her. Are you saying it was my fault? That I didn't get him here in time? Mr. Johnson, I'm saying it was nobody's fault. Nobody's fault. Hurt that bad, Ben. Come on, son. He did a 
good job, Ben. Maybe better than I would have done. Oh, I doubt that, Doctor. Dr. Wills knows his business. Graduate of the University of Edinburgh. Had a practice in Boston. During the war, he was breveted twice. Decorated three times. Ended up as one of the most respected doctors with the Army of the Potomac. That's a pretty stiff competition, Doctor. Oh, no. There's plenty of work for both of us. Yeah. How's it feel, Griff? It feels pretty good. You know, those laudanum pills are really great. You won't need those anymore. Well, I was, I was really beginning to like them. I mean, uh, they stopped the pain, and I was sleeping like a baby. Well, that's because they contain opium. Well, what does that mean? Well, it's dangerous. When you need them, they're worth their weight in gold. The point is not to take them when you don't need them. Well, I guess I can get along fine without them. Good. Thank you, Doctor. Take care. All set? All right. <clears throat> Dr. Wills told me about Griff's arm. He asked me to come out to make sure he hadn't done something wrong. Sure, glad you did. I guess he didn't want me to think he was trying to steal my practice. <laughs> I don't think that's likely to happen, Doctor. Miles? Ben? I talk to you a minute, Doc? Why, of course, Miles. I, uh, I was sorry to hear about Dave. That's why I came to talk to you. Oh? I want to send that new doctor to jail. Well, you better talk to the sheriff about that. I already talked to the sheriff. There's nothing he can do. It's up to you. The doctor can only do his best, and then he... Do his best? He didn't do nothing. He didn't even try. You don't know that, Henry. You weren't even in the room. Well, Evie Parker was, and she told me. Henry, Evie Parker is a trained nurse. I don't think she would have told you something like that. Well, Evie Parker and me have been going together for about six months, and she just didn't tell me. I had to pry it out of her word for word. And she said this. She said, Doc Wills, just let him lay there and bleed to death. Well, maybe there was nothing he could do. Well, talk to Evie. Ask her. She'll tell you. I can't do that, Henry. Evie is just a nurse. She's not qualified to judge a doctor's work. Well, if you don't do something, I'm going to. Uh, I'll talk to Evie, Henry. I'm sorry, Mr. Cartwright. But I, I can't discuss that with you. You discussed it with Henry. That was a mistake. But you see, Henry and I are very close, and we've never had any secrets from one another. But what I told Henry was something I, I sensed. There was nothing definite about it. Well, it was definite enough for Henry and Miles to go to the sheriff to see if... He'd arrest Dr. Wills, even ask Doc Martin to testify against him. Oh, no. Mr. Carrot, I have great respect for... I have great respect for this man. He's, he's probably one of the most brilliant doctors I've ever worked for. That isn't what you told Henry. Well, that night, he, he seemed different. He, he seemed to be detached. There was no sense of urgency. And Dr. Wills just... I didn't tell Henry that Dr. Wills didn't try, but I guess that's the only way to say it. He seemed to be somewhere else, and, and the time didn't matter. Have you talked to Dr. Wills about this? Of course not. I would never talk to the doctor about something like that. Well, I think you should. Before anything else happens, Evie. Evie. Now, where does it hurt, son? Right here when you swallow. When you swallow. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, doctor. I didn't know that you were busy. Oh, no, no, we're just finishing up. Ben, please come in. You haven't met my wife, Nancy. This is Ben Cartwright. Hello. Hello, Mrs. Wilson. And this is our son, Chris. Mr. Cartwright. Chris? Uh, Evie, uh, if we're not interrupting. I, I was wondering if we could have a moment or two. Certainly, certainly. Chris, you go upstairs and your mother will tuck you into bed.
I'm sorry, Doctor. I, I just felt I had to talk to you about it. Don't be sorry, Ben. What you did was exactly right. Exactly right. Miss Parker is an excellent nurse. If she has a doubt, she deserves an explanation. No, you don't owe me an explanation, Doctor. Perhaps I owe Miles Johnson one. I believe you said I seem to be off in another world. I think you used the word lost. Maybe the fact that it was nearly dawn and I was dead tired might have something to do with that. The fact that I'd been on my, on my feet almost 20 hours straight. But I was lost with a man I couldn't save. It's the most terrible kind of loss there is. To know that his heart still beats, that he's still alive, and there is nothing I can do to keep him alive. That everything I've learned, everything I know, is, is nothing. Absolutely nothing. Perhaps I was uh, too tired to conceal that emotion, and that's what you saw. Uh, I'm sorry, Doctor. just what you said. Thank you, Ben. Don't worry, it's all right. It always is until we start packing. I thought we had an agreement. You do not interfere in my professional life. Jim, why didn't you just tell him the truth? I did. That's exactly what I did. You tell us so much that you're beginning to believe the lie yourself. Nancy, that's enough. I don't want to hear any more about it. Jim, you have started three practices in three different cities. Dr. Wills is a state. Now, that's what they all say. And then we have to move, and it's all for the same reason. It was an accident. They were all accidents. Dear good doctor, how many more murders are you going to commit? Now, Jim, no. Jim, please, please don't. Oh, Miles. Ben? I intended to come over to see you today. You seen uh, Henry Ben? No. No. Joe, have you seen Henry? No, not today. Why? Well, he got into a jug of liquor I had stashed out at the place. That was early this afternoon. I haven't seen him since. Well, you don't think he'd do anything foolish, do you? Uh, he just might, if he's mad enough. Could be drunk enough by now. Hmm. Well, Joe, why don't you look around, see if you can find him. I'll do the same. And... Right? You gotta go see the sheriff and tell him. Well, I was on my way there when I saw you. Well, I'll have a look around and Isla. I'll drop over to Doc Will's house and tell him to stay inside, just in case. All right. Oh, oh Mr. Cartwright. Miss Willis, uh, is the doctor in? Well, no. Is it an emergency? Well, no, it's not an emergency. Uh, I, I, I just want to see him. Do you know where he is? Well, he, he left his bag here. I guess he must be out for a walk. Oh, yes, please. And uh, if he comes in before I find him, would you just tell him to wait here for me? Not to go out. Wait here. I'll tell him. to the jail. Keep him there until we get to Henry Johnson. And make sure he stays there, understand? All right. He won't poke his nose out the door. Come on, Doc. Joe, get the other side of the street.
Look, this is silly. I, I, I'm going home. It ain't going to take long, Doc. You, you just have yourself a chair. Listen, it's, it's really important that I... Uh... <laughs> Go on, uh, have yourself a chair. In other words, I'm being protected whether I want to be protected or not, is that it? Well, it ain't just you. We got to protect Henry, too. Now, if he's to shoot you, he'd be in a whole lot of trouble. <laughs> Come on, get up. <clears throat> Look, Deputy. If you won't let me go back to my office, will you go over and get my black bag for me? I ain't gonna let you out of my sight till they catch Henry Johnson. Then go with me. Oh, sir, you staying right here. Then send somebody for it. Why, well, ain't nobody sick here. You try that again. I'm gonna lock you up in one of them cells. He's having some kind of a fit. Take him. Dr. Wills suffers from morphinism. He's an addict. If he doesn't get a certain amount of morphine every day, he gets sick. Every day? Yes. What does it do to him? Well, it affects different people different ways. But in general, it brings a euphoria. You're not aware of the passage of time. You feel calm. It gives you a sense of detachment. Like it was off somewhere, lost. That's what Evie said. That's how he was the night David died. I told you that, Ben. Clem? You told me, Miles. All right, then I want him arrested for murder. As soon as we can get him on his feet, we'll lock him up. She were here. Well, perhaps she'll be here tomorrow. If this goes the way I planned, this trial won't last till tomorrow.
All right, Diane. Let's get started. Your Honor, the prosecution contends that on the night of February 23rd, Dr. James Wills was responsible for the death of David Johnson. That the doctor, while under the influence of an opiate, neglected to perform his proper duties, which was the direct cause of the death of the Johnson boy. Counsel for the defense, Mr. Uh, Mr. Evans. Have we met? No, Your Honor. I'm from Kansas City. How does your client plead? Not guilty, Your Honor. All right, Dan, let's hear your case. You're Dr. Will's nurse. Yes, sir. And you were present when Dave Johnson was brought in, weren't you? I was. What was Dave's condition when they brought him in? Objection, Your Honor. Miss Parker is not a doctor, and therefore not qualified to judge the condition of a patient. I'm afraid he's right, Dan. Was Dave Johnson still conscious? Just barely. Was he bleeding? Yes. How badly? Objection. Same ground. Sustained. Well, since we can't discuss the condition of the patient, let's see what we can find out about the physical and mental state of the doctor. Objection, Your Honor. Sustained. Now, look here, Harvey. Evie's the only person who knows what happened in that room. You've got to give her a chance to testify. Dan, you know as much about the rules of evidence as I do. And I have to be specially strict in this case. Even if she gave Dr. Wills a thorough physical and mental examination at the time, she's not a doctor and therefore not qualified to express a medical opinion. I told you all this before the trial started. Now get on with it. Evie, without stating a medical opinion of the patient and without giving us your judgment of the physical and mental state of the doctor, would you please tell us what happened in Dr. Will's office the night of February 23rd? Dave Johnson died. I don't think it was necessary. Objection, Your Honor! I object! So do I, Mr. Evans. Miss Parker, the court is not interested in what you think. Dan, I suggest you call your next witness. Morphine didn't come into wide usage until the war between the states. It was considered a miracle. There's no accurate estimate of how many lives it saved. Since then, medical science has found numerous uses for morphine and other opium derivatives. It's used to treat uh, nervous conditions, bronchitis, common cold, sleeplessness. Some forms of it are put into babies' pacifiers. Doc Martin, could this drug affect a man's coordination, his ability to function normally? I'm afraid I couldn't say. But it could be possible, couldn't it? It is a drug. Now, what would happen if a man was addicted and took too little? Then he would need more. What would be the effect if he took too much? He'd die. Then it is a dangerous drug. Objection, Your Honor. He's putting words into the witness's mouth. Sustained. All right, all right. Dr. Martin, in a few words, how would you describe morphine? A mixed blessing. No more questions. Prosecution rests. Mr. Evans? Your Honor, this case should never have been brought to trial because there is no law on the statute books anywhere in the United States which prevents a citizen, doctors, lawyers, or even judges from buying or using morphine or any other opium derivative. I have here medical journals, letters from the Surgeon General of the United States, and numerous doctors in the army and in private practice stating that morphine and the other opium derivatives are a modern medical miracle. Its introduction to the army hospitals during the Civil War cut battlefield casualties in half. It is also well known 
that many of those doctors in those army hospitals used the drug themselves to perform superhuman feats of endurance. The drug enabled a man to stay on his feet 18, no, 20 hours a day, tending the wounded from the battlefields. Dr. Wills was decorated twice and cited three times for the work he performed while under the influence of morphine. Now, if it hadn't been for the drug, he would have probably collapsed from exhaustion and become a patient in his own hospital. Countless of our young men are alive today because this man took morphine and stayed on his feet and continued to work. But the use of this drug is not confined to the battlefield. You are Mr. Morris Flanagan? Yes, sir. That vial in your coat pocket, does it contain laudanum tablets? Well, I... Uh... No, 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 no. There, there is nothing to be ashamed of. Now, you are a vice president of one of the local banks. Yes, the miners' bank. Yes, well, that's a very important position. Do you find that the use of laudanum impairs in any sense? Your faculties? Of course not. Or you wouldn't be there. Um, might I have the vial for a moment, please, sir? Thank you. There are many such vials containing morphium, paragoric, laudanum, and other opium derivatives to be found in the homes or offices of many of the citizens in this courtroom, as demonstrated in the letter from the local apothecary. Thank you. If, as the prosecution contends, the drug detracts from our efficiency, <laughs> why then, Virginia City would scarcely be the thriving and energetic community it is. And this entire nation would not be premier among the nations of the world. I move that the case against Dr. James Wills be dismissed. Well, it took you long enough to get to it. Case dismissed. I'm gonna let him make another mistake again. It's like giving him a license to kill. No. The matter is closed now, Henry. We've been to the law, and the law says he's innocent. The matter is closed. Maybe for you it is. Just listen to me. I've already lost one son. Let that be enough. Now let's go home. Let's go on back to the ranch. I've got a couple of things to do in town. Ben, please come in. Thank you. I'm glad you came. I've been wanting to tell you <clears throat> how Sorry, I am, that you had to be involved in my little problem. Well, it's, it's more than that, Doctor. Not just your little problem. Well, there's no point in making a mountain out of a molehill, Ben. You heard the court. There's no law against what I did. No, that's true, but then again, there's no law against uh, causing heartbreak or emotional anguish, either. That doesn't excuse it or make it right. So, ben, I did everything I could to save that boy's life. What did you do, Doctor? Specifically, what did you do? A young man, severed artery, bleeding to death. Now, what do you do to save his life? Well, there are any number of things you can do. What? Well, you stop the bleeding. How? You uh, can uh, clamp the artery or sew it up or even amputate the leg and tie off the artery. Which of those did you do? Well, I, I don't remember. Shall I refresh your memory? You 
walked into that room, you saw Dave Johnson and walked out again. Now, what did you do while you were out of the room? Would you like me to guess? There's nothing wrong with what I did. You took morphine. That's not a crime. No. But the young man died. You are not qualified to judge my work, Mr. Cartwright. You're not a doctor. I am. You probably were at one time. And maybe you will be again. But not now. What about all the lives I've saved? Don't they count for anything? I don't know, Doctor. You might ask Miles Johnson that question. It's over. I was acquitted. Told you everything would be all right. Chris is worse. There's something wrong with him, really wrong. I'll be up in a moment. Now, Jim, right now. There's an abscess in his throat. I'll have to open it and let it drain. Bring him downstairs. You wait here. If something isn't done, the boy might choke to death. All right, then I'll take him to another doctor. But I am not going to take the chance of his being one of your... your accidents. Look at me. Look at me. There is nothing wrong with me. I don't trust you. He's my son, and I'll take care of him. Jim, I'll kill you before you touch him. It's... I mean it. I mean it. The people of this town may find you innocent, Dr. Wills, but I don't. You are guilty. I am not guilty. And you know it, and you try to excuse it. I am not going to take a chance. I can't. I'm not going to stand over my son's grave and listen to you while you try to explain it away by telling me all the lives you've saved. I can't do that. I'm going to take him to another doctor, and then when he is well, I'm going to... I'm going to take him back east. I don't want to see you again. I, I don't want to... I don't want to talk to you again. I don't even want to hear your name again, ever.
You were there at the trial. The matter's settled. Doctor, I saw him set Griff's arm, but I also believe every word that Evie Parker said. And whether she's legally qualified to judge or not, she certainly knows what she's talking about. I agree. Now, if between the time he treated Griff, the time he went in to look after Dave Johnson, something happened to that man. What do you want from me, then? Your opinion. All right. The whole idea of opium or anything derived from it scares me. I think it does affect your judgment and your ability. Then why didn't you say so? Because it's a personal opinion, not a proven medical fact. But the thing that scares me most is addiction. Excuse me. Dr. Martin, my son is sick, and I'd like for you to take care of him, please. Oh, why, of course, Mrs. Wills. Come in. Oh, thank you. He has an infection in his throat or something. Uh, we'll take a look. There we are. Open your mouth. Oh, yes. I'll, I'll be leaving now, Doctor. Oh, oh, Ben. I'd appreciate it if you would consider this conversation confidential. Between friends, of course. Thank you. Now, let's take it. I never touched him, Mr. Cartwright. Uh, he's like this when I come in here. Thank you. Say goodbye to Mr. Cartwright. Bye, Chris. I want to thank you, Mr. Cartwright, for all the all the help you've given Chris and me. Well, it wasn't too much. I wish it could have been more. I wish you had known him before, Mr. Cartwright. He was a he was a good doctor. He was a good husband. All aboard. He was, he was a rare sort of man. I'm sure. Will you, uh, have a good safe journey? Bye. 